love this man, and I don't want to get a divorce, but lately, he wants to turn me into some kind of step for wife, like a robot. I'm just like, you cannot set an impossible standard because she will never meet those expectations. He had two babies during our marriage. You need to stop having children until you learn how to be a responsible adult. And I hear him talking about, my wife wasn't nothing before I met her. Don't get me twisted, because I don't need you. Sometimes, the biggest takeaway is the lesson that you learn. Here is today's case. This retired veteran says his wife's excuses for her suspicious behavior don't add up. She says she's tired of his amateur detective work. Will these newlyweds make it past their one year? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Choice from Annapolis, Maryland. Choice, we're so happy to have you with us in Divorce Court. Welcome. Your Honor, this is the case of Bentley versus Bentley. Thank you, Juan. Mr. Raymond Bentley. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your wife, Miss Jan Bentley. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court today, I understand that the two of you have been married for a year and a half. Yes, ma'am. And you're already having some problems that have brought you here. You're okay. correct. Okay, I'll start with you, Mr. Bentley. Why don't you give me some background? Tell me what's going on, sir. Well, Your Honor, my main thought is I think I'm being cheated on. Hmm. All right. I um, met Jan a couple years ago. We're both educators. Hmm. And uh, one of her friends actually introduced me to her. It was her birthday. And so, you know, I was single at the time. Found out she was single, I offered her to take her out. We did. We went out, had lunch, mm -hmm. dinner, a mm -hmm. couple other things, and we ended up dating. Mm -hmm. Got married shortly afterwards, and everything was fine and dandy. You know, uh, again, as educators, our time was limited. Well, before you get into the specifics, Ms. Mr. Yes, Bentley, what do you have to say, Ms. Bentley, about why you're here today? I'm here because he is way too militant. He's a wonderful man. But he left the service around six, seven years ago. Come on. Mm -hmm. Don't bring it to the house. <laughs> we are not in boot camp. But that's how you acting, Your Honor. Six years and five months, to be exact. Mm. I'm just, just saying. You say you think you, she may be cheating. She says you're too militant and controlling. So you have uh, some differences that you're trying to work out to see if the relationship can move past this year and a half yes, mark that, that you're at. Yes, indeed. So tell me about one of the reasons why you think she may be cheating, sir. After we got married, as educators, we, our time is very scarce. Mm -hmm. But Wednesdays was perfect, because we had planning periods at that time. So we used to go out to lunch, sometime by ourselves, sometime with other coworkers. And then it started from, it went from once a week to once a month. And then about a couple weeks ago, I said, hey, babe, let's go out to lunch. She said, I can't. I'm busy. I'm like, okay. No, I didn't feel right with that answer. Mm. It just didn't come across correctly to me. So I jumped in my vehicle. Our schools are only about two miles apart. I drove up to her school. And lo and behold, her vehicle was not in the spot. I'm like, okay, well, maybe she parked somewhere else. So I just drove all the way around the school one time, didn't see her vehicle, and before I pulled out of the parking lot to head back to my school, I decided to text her and say, hey, what's happening? How you doing right now? I'm busy. I told you I'm taking care of school business. Hmm. Carl wasn't there. So what kind Carl of school business there? were you taking care of? You know, yeah. You submitted a photo of her I did. I had a photo spot. of that spot right there, you know? Her car is usually parked right there until the end of the day, till about 4 o'clock. You know, we stayed there a little bit longer to mm -hmm. grade papers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She said she was doing something. I also think she was doing somebody. Mm. That's just my opinion. And you got this just from the mere fact that her car is not parked there, and so she's obviously, according to you, somewhere she's not supposed to be? She swore, yeah, right, because she said she couldn't, she would, you know, couldn't go to lunch with me. Now, it's other things than that, but that's just the start of it. Where were you, Miss Bentley? You would agree that your, par your car is not parked no. in this spot at that time. Driving around, looking for my car? That's almost stalkerish. Well, he doesn't have to drive around because you have a designated parking right. spot. So However, it's not there. I gave up my parking spot for one of the ladies that actually was pregnant. And she wanted to be a little closer to the school, so I parked in her parking spot. That was it. Oh, okay. So you, you switched with someone else. Right. Where was your car? Mm. In her parking spot. Oh, okay. Did you tell him this? You can't tell him anything. After driving around, I didn't even know he drove around. It was like, uh, I think your husband's in the lot. And then I said, I said where are you, babe? I told you I'm at school taking care of business. Hey, you're right. right. I didn't see your car anywhere. Mm -hmm. Your car wasn't there. I know what kind of car you got. Come on now. Okay, Mr. Bailey, what else do you say you've observed, sir? Well, let's see. Christmas time, you know, we usually share gifts with each other, close family members, maybe a couple of uh, associates from school. And uh, I just happened to walk into the bedroom, and underneath her pillow, it was a box sticking out. You know, a small box. And I'm like, okay, what's that? So I went over to it, opened it up, and there was this nice bracelet in there. I'm like, okay, 
was it trying to be hidden? It ain't for me. It was a it was a female bracelet. So I'm like, hey, baby, where'd you get this? You know, where'd you get this from? First thing I thought was maybe her brother, or maybe one of her relatives got it to her. But that was a very expensive bracelet. I asked her about it. She said, well, one of my friends bought it for me. So I had to go ahead and do something different. I had to go out there and, and show my love for it. I bought her one myself, a little more expensive. I'm trying to say, hold up, whoever bought this for you ain't gonna outdo me. So if you see up on the picture up there, I bought one that was a lot, a lot nicer than the one she got from that cheap dude or cheap person that she got it from. Where did the bracelet come from? It came from a friend. You know we exchange stuff all the time. A girlfriend, a homegirl, <laughs> that's it. We exchange gifts. We hadn't seen each other in a while. We got each other mm -hmm. gifts. And it, that's it. Right. We do that all the time. Do you do that regularly where you exchange pricey gifts with, with your girlfriends? Yeah, it wasn't. He think it, it was expensive. It really wasn't that well, expensive. For her but friends, yeah. yes, it was. Hmm. It wasn't. He doesn't even know all my friends. It was a so, cheap, and so why did you mine. have the bracelet under the pillow in your bed? Well, what it was, I just opened it up. I didn't know what mm -hmm. it was. You know how you get a gift. He was like, oh, wow, this is great. Right. It's Christmas time. Come on, we're, right. we're exchanging gifts. No. You know well, why was it is? under the pillow in your bed? But it was, what well, I was, he's a little stickler about the bed. It gotta be this, it gotta be that. Well, so I'm trying to fix the bed, forgot the, the darn bracelet box under there. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I was trying to hide anything. He's how saying it was under the, the pillow. I don't, I was making up the bed because I don't want to hear his mouth, okay? He pops quarters off of stuff. The kids even have to have their beds made up. Of course. He's, he's a maniac. I'm just saying. So you're not gonna answer my question? I, I'm, I'm telling you, I was looking at it, okay? It's not from a, a, a man. I would have been told him that. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna take anything from it. Like Listen, this I'm just curious you because if, like you find a, if you can't find a box under the pillow in the bed, that just, that's just an interesting place for you to, right. to put something. Look a little suspicious to me. She was going to go out with a couple of friends and associates. And reluctantly, she kind of came up to me and said, hey, you want to go too? As she was walking out the door. And I said, yep, I'm coming. <laughs> so we get over there, and one of the friends said, hey, Bradford. Talking to you? To me. I'm still trying to find out who's Bradford. Well, who's Bradford? Ma'am? <laughs>anything more specific, sir, than, than these two? I do. I things? do. Because, you know, these are... I understand why you, you're asking questions, but you've leaped to cheating. Yes, ma'am. And I remember one time, it was uh, Thanksgiving. She was going to go out with a couple of friends and associates. Mm -hmm. And reluctantly, she kind of came up to me and said, hey, you want to go too? As she was walking out the door. But to her surprise, I said, yeah, I'm going. So I jumped in, went with her. We all sat down at the sports bar watching, <laughs> watching the football game. You don't game. think she wanted you to go? I don't think she wanted me to go. Mm -hmm. The way she asked me and the way she was on the way out the door was like, you want to come? As she was walking out. And I said, yep, I'm coming. <laughs> so we get over there, and her little friend's like, hey, they're kind of like, oh, he came too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I came too. So we're sitting there, we're talking, and one of the friends said, hey, Bradford, I'm really surprised and happy at what you're doing for your lady when you guys go on this honeymoon. I'm like, Bradford? Who is Bradford? Talking like, to you? To me. So anyway, I said, who is Bradford? And she looked at me like... I didn't say Bradford. Yes, you did say Bradford. I said, so I turned to her. Who is Bradford? She's like, that's between y'all. She turned her head like this. I'm like, oh, hold up. No. So the whole night, for a couple of minutes, we talked about who's Bradford, who's Bradford. And I'm still trying to find out who's Bradford. Well, who's Bradford? Bradford is one of my friend's men. And they, she said it again. Wait. It's so, so I'm just saying, she made a mistake. The names are so... Come on. Nah, okay, that could happen. It could happen, you know, but then a friend could have said that. Before the two of you got married, because you did actually date for a year and a half before you got married, did you have any suspicions then? No, I mean, it was all fun. And we met at the, right before some, uh, summer vacations. So we had a long couple of months to get to know each other. And it just flowed well. I didn't have any suspicions like that, you know, mm. and I'm hoping she didn't either. So this has all come up since you've been married? Yes, ma'am. And you say that you That's feel right. like he's retired from the military, but not really. N no, not really, ma'am. You don't understand. I feel like I'm in... I went to the military. I, I didn't. Mm. <laughs> I went to college. That's it. Our kids, too. Everybody that comes over. Imagine coming to, din to dinner at our home and he's, like, greeting people like this or, or, or like this. You're on a, I'm just making Who sure the riffraff don't come in the house and understand that you ain't doing what you do at your house at my house. I'll give you another example. We went to um, visit her family um, earlier during the year. As I was talking, I noticed she was on the phone. I wasn't over there trying to snoop. But I heard her say something about reservations. I'm like, okay, reservations. I'm thinking like, okay, she's setting up dinner reservations for us. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, all right. And so later on during the evening as she's getting her jacket on and stuff, walking, ready to walk towards the door, I'm thinking like, okay, hey, where are we going? You know, where are we making, who's going with us? She said, who's us? I said, I, I heard you say something about some reservations. She said, yeah, that, that's not for you. I'm like, wait, hold, hold, wait, wait, wait. And my family ain't going either. I'm like, wait, 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 so you're making reservations for who? 
Wh well, who were the reservations for? Your Honor, the reservations were for him. I was throwing him a surprise party. Mm. But, of course, look how he is. He's checking under the pillows, doing all this. He, he's too extra. He's doing way too much. I can't even play So did you anything. throw him a party? He's, yes, he was eavesdropping. It was, uh, he almost missed this party because he didn't want to answer my phone. He had an attitude. So she threw you a surprise party? That's what they end up turning it into. That's what they say anyway. I don't believe that was the case. I think they just kind of fixed it up a little bit later and said, hey, let's, get, let's make this happen. Everybody, let's go, let's go. I don't think it was for me. So you think she went to all the trouble to plan a surprise party for you with your all, you, your family, and your friends just to cover it that one call I, where I, you I, heard her say that's reservations? What that's what I think, no. It was all a part of the cover-up. What do the two of you agree on right now? Because it's only been a year and a half that you've been married. So technically, you're still supposed to be in the honeymoon phase. Has anything been going right for the two of you in the last year and a half? <laughs> you repeat that question, Your Honor. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. He's just way too much, Your Honor. You know, we go to our favorite restaurant, and I'll get something cute, because I like just a little sweet something, you know, the tequila sunrise, something cute. Him? He's like, this is all you're drinking? He tests my, my drink. It's like, it's not strong enough. Like Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? And we then, got Kool-Aid at the but house. But you're not drinking it. What's going on? You want her to I'm order like the drinks that you think are, are better than what you have at home? Well, we going out someplace, nice restaurant, a couple friends. Let's get something that we can't Okay, get at the you house, keep you know? saying we. See? But as an individual. Mm. You order what you like. So if you think about all that at home, you order what you like. But, but she can order her own. And she does. Right? Usually. Sometimes I'm like, I suggest this or that, you know? Yeah, Anna, he doing too much suggesting. Our sex life? I just can't believe how he is. And so he Look, wants I'm a healthy, it all the time. I mean, I could just clean, be walking around. Energetic I gotta brother. make sure I have a robe on or something. Because he just see a slight glance or something. I, I'm wearing a full pajamas. And this is an issue for you. Head scar What? It was all fine and dandy. Now what we do married. the two of you agree on right now? Because it's only been a year and a half that you've been married. So technically, you're still supposed to be in the honeymoon phase. Has anything been going right for the two of you in the last year and a half? <laughs> you repeat that question, Your Honor? <laughs> Is there anything you like about your wife right now? I do. You know, the same things I saw when I first met her, I still see them with more potential. Now, the differences, of course, um, being that we are a little age difference. Um, you know, so you're 17 years older? Just, yeah, about that. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, you know, so, hey, I can go. I'm a coach. I'm a teacher. I do all this. I do a lot of stuff. And um, I'm not saying she has to do it all either, but, I mean, come on now. It's 9 o'clock at night. You shouldn't be ready to go to bed already. Look, we ain't 58 years old, 67 years old. Come on, we're young still. You know, the night is young. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little fun. Once a week is kind of old. I don't care how tired I am. I got time for some loving. So what, what is going right for you right now, sir? Anything? What's going right right now is that we still, even though it's a little broken, we still have some communications going on. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still talking. Uh, we realize we have children and we have professions. Uh, so we're respecting that. W what do you have to say, Ms. Bentley? Yeah, Anna, I love my husband. But when we first started dating, it, it, it was great. But then I signed the dotted line. It's like I signed up for the military. We'll go back to sex, okay? Sex, he'd be like, can I get, you know, can I do all of these things for him, right? And then he dresses up like a drill sergeant. It was cute at What's the beginning. What's wrong with a little bit of role play? Uh, Your Honor, it was cute well, at the beginning. Well, for you, I don't know if dressing as a drill sergeant is really right. role play. Well, it's just a hat. That's but then he's like, hey, hey, can you give me three more inches, you know, have your leg a certain way, have the cover a certain way, and he's bringing out the ruler. And Your Honor, and so, mm. and our kids are poor kids. They playing with water guns outside and water balloons. Oh, and it's great because oh, I'm glad the they balloons. outside and not tearing up my living room and kitchen, okay? And they drop a water balloon maybe two inches from his Cadillac. Oh, those poor kids. I just kids. spent all day what, they have, that he had the, What? He had Armor them running all. around the, the, the home backwards. You got to teach them respect then for people's property. picking up, up the piece of the balloon, each of them. You got 15 seconds. While they were all doing sprints. Yes. I'm a coach. That is a lot. And our kids play sports. How long were you in the military? 30 years. 30 years, wow. 
So 30 years in the military, you also teach JROTC, yes, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Do you think that your military experience, your professional experience is, is blending into, into your personal home life as well? Honestly, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm just bringing structure and, and stability in the household mm -hmm. and teaching these young folks to be responsible for their own actions. There's consequences for bad choices. And, uh, you know, they need to understand that. You do understand also, though, when you talk about intimacy and what's happening, it doesn't just start in the moment. It's everything that happens throughout the course of the day, the week, everything that, le all, the way you're communicating, the way you're conducting all of those things. And perhaps that military persona that I see, perhaps you can relax it a little bit when it's time to have some affectionate time with, with your wife. I agree, Your Honor. Now, ma'am, for you, what, what is it that you teach? I teach uh, English mm -hmm. and math. Mm -hmm. You teach math, yes. so you deal with problem solving. Right. So, so here we have some problem solving that we need to do. Yes. Because you know when you come into a marriage, you're coming to an equation, it's, it's one plus one, and you're trying to get it to equal two, right. but that two is really a partnership. You talk about being in the military and all those things, you know a lot about teamwork. So here you are in a marriage, it really is what is best for the team. said here today really raises, uh, raises a red flag for me. You've had to connect so many dots and yes. make so many assumptions and make so many leaps that it's hard to really put together there's anything actually happening in reality. So, you know, having open and honest communication about your plans. There are some times that you may want to go somewhere and you honest. may not want to invite your husband. Honest communication. Because you want to go and have a night out with your friends. That's okay. Okay. But when he thinks you're being sneaky about it and not upfront and honest. That's what's causing the questions and that's what's causing the issues. You know, when you choose a spouse, you really have to identify how that person wants to be loved because everybody has their own special way that they want to be loved. And we grow up, we're taught, you know, well, this is how you show somebody love and this is how you do it. But that's not really the case because you have to learn how does, what makes this person happy? What can I do to add happiness to her life? And then you do those things and then you ask yourself the same thing about him. Because both of you are established, you have your careers, your professionals, you have your children that you've raised and are raising. So you have solid foundations that you're building on. So you've chosen someone to add something to your life. It's really hard to believe that there wasn't some hint that there was going to be a, a bit of a military bend to okay. his personality as well. Yes, ma'am. However, I didn't think it was going to be like this. Like, I didn't sign up for the military. You know, it, it, fair enough. The, he, he, he's way more intense than what and, we and that's why I've talked to him. Uh, that's why we've talked today about relaxing some of that because you do have to understand she doesn't have the same background as you, and she and and the children are not a part of your platoon. Y'all are not one big platoon <laughs> operating in the Bentley household. Well, correct. Okay. Tell They're your you family, <laughs> not your platoon. And whenever there's an issue between the two of you, you really have to ask, how can we resolve this issue that is been the most beneficial for the team and the partnership that we've agreed to be in? Right. You understand? Right. You married each other for a reason. Never forget those reasons. Good luck to both of you. The best piece of advice I think that uh, I got from Judge Faith is we need to uh, communicate openly and more honestly. And I need to realize that um, I'm not in the Army and this is not my platoon, as she said it. The best piece of advice that we got from Judge Faith, or I got from Judge Faith, was that we're in a partnership, you know what I mean? I love my husband. You know, if he calmed down with the, you know, with the militant part, everything could be great. I'm gonna relax and realize once again that uh, I need to talk more to my wife and not at my wife. Now I remember why I love him so much. <laughs> nope, one. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs>